Afsat Ay, thank you so much, Rahma. Welcome to Sweden. We are so happy to welcome you to Stockholm. Uh, my first question is, uh, tell us more about yourself and uh, your journey to become an um, inspired, inspirational thinker. Okay. So, um, my name is uh, Rahma Roda. So, my, my first name is Rahma. My middle name is Rahma Roda. So, I write under the pen name of Rahma Roda. Um, I am a, a mother of four. Um, I came to Canada at the age of seven, and I only decided to become an author later on in life. Um, because I am the oldest of seven children, and when my parents came to Canada, it was very important for me to study something that made sense to them. Um, becoming a writer didn't make sense to them. They wanted you to become an author, and they wanted you to become a lawyer, a doctor, something that they could understand. Becoming an artist, becoming a writer, it didn't make sense. So I went to university. I uh, graduated in, in, with an international business degree. I got a government job. Um, I got married. I had children. And then I started thinking, is this it? Is this, that's it? Now I wait for retirement. And I knew that I wanted to do something more. So when my daughter was four years old, she started um, watching, I don't know if the movie is popular here, uh, Elsa, Frozen. So she wanted to have long blonde hair and blue eyes. And she started telling me, you know, I'm not beautiful because um, I, I don't have blue eyes and blonde hair. And it reminded me of when I came to Canada and I didn't see myself anywhere. And so that's the reason why I said, you know, it's really important how is it that my child who is born in Canada is also suffering from the same things that I was suffering from decades ago. And, and so that's why I realized that um, representation is very important in, in all aspects, in books, in, 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 uh, in uh, 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 gatherings, in television, in all of the sphere of representation is very important. So that's when I started to write books and do self-publishing for the representation of uh, black Muslim children in uh, North America, but throughout the world, honestly. Um, being Muslim and being black, it's a very uh, distinct intersection that requires its own work because not only are you black, but you're also Muslim. And as a woman who also veils and who is uh, visibly Muslim, I think it's very important to uh, work in that sphere to make sure that there's representation for that. So, uh, okay, how many books have you written? Oh, okay. So the book he translated, um, Little Brother for Sale, um, is my second book. My first book was uh, Mahima's Quest. It's about a little girl who's a, um, a Somali little girl whose family doesn't celebrate birthdays. And then she's like, I want to have a birthday party. I want to do the same things my friends are doing. And her family tells her, we don't celebrate birthdays, but this is our, what we do in our culture. Little Brother for Sale was my second book. My third book was uh, Dear Black Child. Inshallah, in February uh, 2024, uh, Dear Muslim Child is coming. And inshallah, much more to come. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the Little Brothers for Sale, uh, that's a really good book. And now we are both in English. Speech, even in Somali. Yes. Uh, how have you got the inspiration to write this story? And it's, a, uh, it's a funny story. So when I had my daughter, um, and then I gave birth to my son, she said, um, "I'm not. I don't like this little boy. I want to have. Uh, I want to sell him to somebody." And so we started joking, and I said, "Okay, how would we sell him? How would we do that?" So through that conversation and through that. Uh, what I thought at the time was just a funny conversation. Um, the idea came, and every time I read it to different schools, 
children can understand how, yes, I wanted to sell. I'm the oldest of seven, I wanted to sell all of them. Um, so it's something very relatable for children. And so that's how the, the story came. So I like to tell people that the inspiration came from my daughter. I wrote it with my daughter and she's very, um, She's very proud, but now she says, please stop telling people that because I don't want to sell my brother anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you have written four books. Uh, what, what is the main age in terms of the oldest choose for you are writing? Yes, so the, the main themes that I want to uh, represent is positive representation of black Muslim children specifically other cultures that are the Somali culture. So this book that came out is called uh, Dear Muslim Child, but there is a spread here in this book where there's a Somali uh, uh, family that's depicted. So I was very happy that the illustrator chose to represent Somali uh, culture in this one. When you get a publisher, you don't get to choose the illustrator. So the illustrator contacted me and said, I want to showcase a Somali family. So alhamdulillah, that was shown in this book. But always, my, my, um, my, uh, my hope is to have a positive representation of black Muslim children, specifically African children, to include culture aspect, to include celebrations that are our own, to include our cultures, our language, uh, all the aspects of, of us in a positive way so that people can learn from that and our children can see themselves in, in that aspect also. Thank you. Uh, do you. Did you always want to be a writer? Uh, maybe a little bit yeah. from your childhood? I, I always wanted to write, but uh, when I came to Canada, um, I was educated in, uh, in French. So we learned French first because of where we immigrated in Quebec, and, and that's a, um, a province where they speak French. Um, I would write a lot of stories. I, you know, my mom is a very big uh, storyteller. Uh, a lot of kabayal and a lot of songs, a lot of things. So I, would, I started writing stories, but the teachers would always focus on your mistakes. The grammar is not good. Your story doesn't make sense. So all the time I, I used to get discouraged because I believe that as Somalis, we all are, we are oral storytellers. We are all poets, we are all writers. We, we have the artistic side in us, in our blood, in our DNA. We do so many things so effortlessly it is within us. So I would write, I would love to write stories, but every time a teacher would say, you're not writing properly, you're not, you're not um, paying attention to the structure. So it would discourage me a lot, but always I have always loved writing stories, telling stories, listening to stories. Um, so it was always part of me. And even though I didn't, if I could go back and study something in university, I would study uh, storytelling and, and being uh, a writer. Uh, unfortunately, not something that made sense to my parents, but now, as my children are growing into, I try to listen to the gifts that God gave them. Are they good at telling stories? Are they, are, are they writers? Uh, I, my oldest daughter, she likes to illustrate. So I put her in art classes. I try to encourage the things that she's good at because I think it's important not to just uh, encourage your children in the things that you want them to do, but also encourage them in the things that they are good at, the things that God gave them that would bring them joy, that would bring them happiness. I think that is very important. So I try to encourage my daughter to tell her, yes, if she wants to illustrate, but how can we put that in maybe something else also? So at this time we're thinking of doing, you know, she wants to be a, a therapist that helps people doing art therapy. So that way she can use her artistic side, but she can also do another career. So uh, those are the things that I try to uh, help my children discover their gifts, but also try to channel that into also something that's going to help society, inshallah. Okay, 
what have you found to be the most challenging about children's books? Um, the most challenging about picture books, people think that picture books are easy to write, that it's uh, anyone can write it. But it is one of the most difficult uh, pieces of writing that you can do. Because you are writing for many people, you are writing for the parents, for them to see something, you are writing for the children, you are writing, uh, the, the images have to also have a story for the children that cannot read. Um, the, the story has to make sense on many levels. So picture books are something that are very hard to do. You have very few words, but you have to say so much with so little words. So it is a lot more difficult than people think it is, um, but it is very rewarding because you are, uh, you know, influencing the young mind, and you are also, picture books are also not only for kids, but for every, everyone. I didn't grow up reading picture books because, you know, by the time I was uh, seven or eight, uh, I started reading at 10. I, I, I didn't, I skipped this part. But alhamdulillah, I rediscovered it when I was a parent. I love picture books. Any subject that I have to introduce to my kids, picture books is where I start because it is concise, it is small, and it is very approachable for kids. So it is a very difficult thing to do. But when you do it well, it is very rewarding. Thank you. Have you ever experienced a writer's block? How did you deal with it? Um, yes, a writer's block, very, all the time, all the time. Every day you doubt yourself, you're like, how can I continue? It's not making sense. Um, I don't think I can do this anymore. Um, a lot of times I do, um, but being a writer is not, it's, it's not something that you just do when you have an idea. You have to be like any other profession, you do it, you have to have a routine, you have to continuously write. Um, a lot of times I write something and I'm like, it's really bad. And a lot of times I say this is really great and then my agent says it's really bad. So it is that continuous coming back, it takes a lot of courage because sometimes um, you get discouraged a lot. It's very competitive, it's very hard to get into. Um, and it is also very scary because uh, you write something and it's out there for the world. People can have opinions. Uh, some people can say it's amazing. Some other people would say this is absolutely garbage. So you have to have uh, uh, you have to be really uh, passionate, but you also have to be very disciplined. Okay. Do you have plans to write books beyond children's books? Um, inshallah, I, I, I want to write uh, for older uh, children, uh, for um, graphic uh, novels, inshallah, other things, but it is uh, any time you master something, it is now I have to conquer my fear to say I can do the next thing. So inshallah, I do hope to write for older children. And then I hope to write for uh, also adults as well. Inshallah, I would love to write a novel one day. That's good. Uh, do you come up? Okay. Yes, so Dear Muslim Child is coming up uh, in, um, in February. And I, I hope that they can have mass distribution um, in, uh, over here as well. I would love for you guys to have access to it also here. Thank you, Rahma. Uh, thank you so much. Saab, I to know. Rahma, I to know. I don't 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 know. I <laughs> never, never. Will you get smarter? <laughs> <laughs>
أحد حس استمانتي الإيميل رئيس ودير تاني قلت لي بو جاب حدوني على سماني كرتش 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 بو أنا مايك أوكي إن أنا بورتا مركا إن واحد سيري أوكي قف كان واقع يوم اسمي كريمي واحد سيري أسماني سيري واحد سو تلاو ده بو جات بدي يجي يجي يبسدي أنا قلت لي كم بان كرتش بيا أسماني هذا كويري أسماني سيري أكون نقطة أنا I don't know Mereka umur kan ada ku al Afku kerjai, wujud de si kalau kuliah ay Afku kalle. Mereka anak sedar ku tuh cuma dua orang Somali pun orang yang. Mereka anak guna de Somali kan, wujud dengan mana akhir cerai. Mereka, lakin Alhamdulillah sifat Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala dan al Barik Abu Fahsan hari ini. Musa itu mereka. بوكي ما أخذ مات شيء سو إن أبغى أنت بتشيل أقول إيش شيء وأنت ما ولا أخذ يروح ما أخذ كم شيء يعني آه شيء بعد هذا رجع ما يقول هذا مقصود إذا جاء شيء وسيت واحد دو واحد إذا جاء وافت اللي رأى وافت عرض على سكتي ده شرعه كل حدوا أفعل ما كسوت شيء ذا ولا شرعه مركا هو ناس من عمت ناس يا مال هو عند سناكس لحرو ما كله طبيعي وعمو هو في كل يوم عصرية وعصرية وعصرية مركا نطي هذه دو ما تدري مركا عصرية ها أنت من الشعب اللي على كيسة وحلا حرو يا بولر يا عمتي وعمو ما كله عش ما لا طبيعي يوم وطبيعي عادي قال عنده يعني